Editing your DNS settings can sound intimidating, but don't worry, I can help. Your DNS records are basically just instructions for your domain name. They're often used to connect your domain name to your website, and I'm going to show you how to do that in a few different ways in this video. I'm also going to talk about text records and what TTL means. So let's get started. All right, so if you are with Google Domains, the first thing you're going to do is go ahead and hit Manage next to the name of your domain name. And then from here, you're going to click uh, DNS on the left. Now, every uh, domain registrar does these settings differently and puts them in a different place. Um, you're going to want to often look for something that says DNS records. With that being said, the first thing I want to talk about is setting your name servers, which are often in a different place. With Google domains, you edit them by clicking right up here where it says custom name servers. Now, I don't like to usually use name servers to point my domain name because when you do this, that means everything, all of your settings get pointed to your host and you make changes to these settings with your host. That includes any email services you might have set up. So when you make this switch, it's sometimes likely that your email might get messed up. It also kind of traps you a little bit or makes it really difficult. If you want to move your host, you're going to have to worry about um, are, are your domain settings going to get messed up. And people move their hosts all the time. People upgrade from budget hosts to high quality hosts often. So if you keep your settings with your domain registrar, you're gonna have less options to do something frustrating and annoying later. Um, of course, people do change their domain registrars, people transfer their domain names, but often the settings transfer over. But if you still wanna use name servers, let me show you how to do that. Now, you'll get this information from your host. It should be in a very easy place to find. Again, every host is gonna be different, um, but they're not gonna hide this information. And if you can't find um, your name servers, contact your host. If you contact your host and you still can't find your name servers, find a better host. So when you get those name servers, you're just going to put them right here. It'll probably be something like name server one hostname.com. Don't copy these that I'm doing here. These are not real. Um, make sure you get them from your host. And then click save. And then notice what happens here. It says custom name servers have been set up but are not in use. And we've got this error up here that says your domain isn't using these settings. Right now we have default name servers active, which means uh, Google Domains is using their name servers. So what we wanna do to continue using our own custom name servers is to click this switch to these settings button right here. And there we go. Now your domain is using those custom name servers. Note the little, um, alert that came up, uh, the changes are done, but they might take some time to uh, propagate. So that means that you change the settings right, but it might take a little bit for them to actually work. This is a normal thing when you make any DNS changes, so don't stress about it. Now, my preferred way of pointing a domain name is using a record, so I'm gonna show you how to do that next. Go ahead and click over to default name servers, and then go ahead and click switch to these settings. The first thing I want you to do here is under type, choose A. And then for TTL, we're gonna put 10 minutes. I'm gonna talk about that a little later, but for now, just put 10 minutes. Or 600, which is 600 seconds, which is also 10 minutes. And what A records do is they point to the IP address on the server where your website is hosted. So you will be able to get this information from your host, just like you got your custom name servers. Again, it should be real easy to find. If not, just shoot them over a message and ask where you could find your IP address. I'm just gonna put something random in there right now. And then for host name, uh, with a lot of uh, domain registrars, you're gonna put an at symbol with Google domains, you can just leave it blank. And this is mostly done, but I also like to do something else when I'm pointing my domain name, which is setting up for uh, wildcard subdomains. 
Now, for this site, I'm not planning on using subdomains, but I might in the future, so I'm just gonna go ahead and set this up now so I don't have to worry about it uh, in the future. Uh, if you, you should be able to do this just fine unless you have a specific reason not to do this. So just go ahead and again, put the TTL at 600, the type at A, put the exact same um, IP address, and then for host name, you're just gonna put an asterisk or the star symbol. So what that does is that says every subdomain you set up will also go to that IP address. And then go ahead and of course click save. And now it's coming up with the error that the IP address is um, invalid, which you know we don't have to worry about here because you guys know I just made a fake one. So that's fine, let's move on. Uh, next I wanna show you how to do a CNAME record. It is very similar for type, click, C name, and then for TTL, go ahead again, 10 minutes. So a C name is used to create an alias from one domain name to another. Um, if you're not a web designer, you're just a regular business owner and you're doing this, it's probably because somebody told you exactly what settings to put in there. Um, so you don't really need to know the ins and outs of why it works and how it works just whatever they told you to put in for the domain name, put it under data, and then whatever you were told to put in for the host name, put it in for the host name. This is often done to do something like the uh, www version of your site. So if you were setting up, it would be something like www under host name. And then for data, you just put in your regular domain name. Next, let me show you a text record. After these other records, the text is gonna be super easy. For type, go ahead and put TXT. For TTL, put 10 minutes. And now text records are really just to record text information on your uh, domain name. This is really often used for when Google wants to verify that you have ownership of your domain name for like a lot of the different services they use, they'll often tell you to put in a text record and this is how you would do that. So you're again, often gonna just get instructions where somebody tells you exactly what to put in here. Um, usually the host name will just be blank or the at symbol and then the data will be whatever um, was given to you for whatever purpose you're making the text record. And of course, as always, when you're done, don't forget to click save. Now, before we finish up, let me talk a little bit about TTL. What that means is time to live. And if you put your mouse over this little question mark icon right here, it says how long in seconds before any DNS server updates its copy of the record. So that's basically it. The lower the number, the more often the DNS server will uh, check to update its copy of the record. So when you set it low, it's great if you're making changes to your domain name and you want them to happen quickly, um, but it does take up a little bit more server resources. So when I'm making changes to my DNS settings, uh, I like to set them as low as possible in this situation, 10 minutes. And then the best practice is to bring it up higher, uh, usually to about an hour or 3,600 seconds after everything is done propagating. And remember, in general, it takes about uh, 24 to 48 hours for your domain settings to propagate across the world. And that's it. Now you can edit your DNS settings with ease. If I was helpful to you, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you have any questions go ahead and comment below and I'll help you out. If you're building your own website, make sure you check in the description. I have a free download of a nine step roadmap to DIY your first website and it will guide you through everything you need to do um, and make it real easy to make sure you're not forgetting anything. Thank you so much for watching.